don't know about you, but every time I see a coin that's from 2018, or at least before the crazy years of 2020 onwards, I do somewhat yearn for those simpler times. The world is pretty crazy right now, and it's certainly affecting the gold and silver market. So in today's video, I want to do a bit of a deep dive into my thoughts, emotions, and feelings on that subject and how I'm reacting as a stacker, and also how I'm seeing changes happening within the world of buying and selling gold and silver. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here, and a warm welcome to you all joining me for another Precious Metal Ramble. Now there is no doubting that the world is bat poo crazy, to coin a YouTube monetization friendly phrase and the absolute craziness that is happening in this world is definitely affecting the gold and silver and precious metal markets. We saw a huge drop in precious metal prices a few weeks ago only to recover incredibly swiftly when a certain large geopolitical event happened in the Middle East. I'm not gonna go into details on that particular situation. I don't feel it's right for this channel. All I want to talk about today is a little bit of level-headedness when it comes to reacting to these kind of situations that are happening in the world, and more specifically to the huge craziness that is the precious metal markets when things like this happen. It seems like we've had nothing but runs of humongously crazy situations over this last three or four years, and I don't feel like they're going to ease up anytime soon. And we've seen things go round in circles, go up and go down, and people sometimes can get a little bit over-invested, over-egged on certain things. So whilst I'm not a financial advisor, I do want to share some of my thoughts and opinions and observations from my own experiences buying and selling precious metals as a kind of fledgling dealer, as somebody who does it for part of my living through the Backyard Bullion Buyers Club. That said, I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on this subject as we go throughout the video, so please feel free to share them down below in that comment section. But let's keep the politics out of it. We're here to talk about precious metals and how the world is reacting to the situation that we're seeing. So, first things first, what you will inevitably start to see, if not already, I know I certainly have start to, started to see it already, is um, lots of channels, lots of media sources, lots of dealers, lots of different um, outlets talking about the rise in silver and gold prices that we've seen over this last week and a bit. And let's just put this in perspective. Gold and silver haven't actually reached the same price points in pound terms. I grant there are different currencies out there that have all-time highs right now, but they haven't actually reached those points that we were seeing pre-big poo hit the fan scenario. So there is definitely something to be said about just understanding the, that this is not the start of a moonshot, this is not the start of a huge climb in prices of gold and silver to unaffordable heights or the get-rich-quick schemes that might now be falling into place. Is there a situation that is now calling for people to have gold and silver in their life? I would argue if you have um, a certain wealth level and a certain debt level, i.e. zero debt, and you're looking to protect some of that wealth over a long period of time, then yes, getting some gold and silver right now would probably not be a horrendously bad idea to do. But of course, the prices are quite high right now. It is important to remember that the world continues to spin on its axis. Everything is still happening. Everything in this world is still going. And to just immediately think that the world is about to completely collapse financially or um, economically or even geopolitically is probably not a rational one for a lot of people to think about. Now, I get that there is concern, and I get that there are people who will be uh, venting that concern by using precious metals as a vehicle to protect themselves. But let's not forget some of the really kind of simple things about precious metals is that they are completely useless in terms of actual real world things that you can do with them. I mean, looking at the people who are currently in a lot of turmoil and potential danger. Is gold and silver really going to help you in that moment, in that absolute critical moment when bullets are flying and when, uh, you know, rockets are flying? No, it's it's not. It's really important to keep perspective on things. You know, gold and silver are about transporting wealth through crises, through this whole crazy world that we're in, to get to a point on the other side when you can use them. Um, that is very important to remember. So in terms of my own experience, at the moment, I am seeing 
uh, of course, quite a little bit of an uptick in the demand for gold and silver. Uh, I am seeing buyers come to me uh, outside of what I've got for sale when I have them for sale, and they are asking for more. You know, I'm getting people who are saying they've got budgets to buy hundreds of ounces at a time, and it is not difficult to sell gold and silver right now. And in the UK, selling gold and silver at a slight premium is how you know the market is. We can sell gold and silver for approximately £22 an ounce. It seems to be a good going market rate right now, so definitely something to think about. There is a lot of people out there who are wanting to buy, and if you are in a situation where you might need to sell or have to sell or you just think it is the right time to sell, then there's definitely an ease of market situation right now. Now, in terms of the actual sellers, I have had, um, I think, a fair few more inquiries recently about selling um, than I have had since, of course, prices went down. Now, that's logical. When prices go up, there are going to be people who will look to take advantage of that by actually selling some of their precious metals. But the market right now is still very difficult, and whilst there is a huge demand, I feel that the demand is more there for those bullion products, those really cheap pieces. There are certainly markets out there still for um, proof coins and more expensive collectible coins, but generally speaking, I find that they are less desirable. Um, you certainly in volume anyway. If you've got a monster box of premium one ounce silver coins from somewhere like the Perth Mint or something, you're going to struggle to sell them all very quickly at the desired price. You might get one or two of them sold quite quickly, but generally speaking, bullion sells and it sells quick. So definitely something to think about from that perspective. Now in terms of where I am as a stacker collector, I know a lot of people sort of put some weight on my own you know, strategy when it comes forward to this. I'm I'm somewhat hanging fire. Now I'm in a sort of luxury position in that I have already got an established gold and silver uh, position and stack physical gold and silver. And it is something that I'm not necessarily looking to massively extend on. I'm looking still to get hold of a few bits of the modern new releases that come out, things that are interesting to me and things that I think will be interesting to share on the channel. But generally speaking, I am not going to rush out and buy hundreds of ounces of gold. Even if you've got a decent amount of stack in, in your wealth portfolio right now, you don't need to go over egged on any asset at all. And gold and silver often can be quite a difficult one to do that. Um, you know, there is argument out there that gold and silver are undervalued right now. Certainly silver is undervalued right now. And I'm not going to sit here and just completely uh, ignore those arguments that there is you know, some benefit to be had by picking up gold and silver right now. But for me, I am not looking to acquire uh, lots of new metals into my portfolio. There is a certain threshold at which you feel that you've got what you need, if that makes sense. And I think that's an important message to kind of put through because there are a lot of people out there who are seeing this wider geopolitical situation as sort of a trigger point for things to go to that moon and to earn big bucks. And it's important to remind this modern world. And I do think, unfortunately, that there is this kind of mantra out there now that things have to be a quick turnaround, a quick fix. And there's this almost conspiracy that silver is being held down and it will sometimes or at some point explode massively into this huge profit for everybody that's in it. It's not going to happen. It's been talked about for the last 10, 15, 20, 30 years since the Hunt brothers tried to do their own manipulation. It is not something to rely on. It is something to have as a part of a bigger picture. And that's something I think that's really lost on quite a few people out there. And it's important not to forget that a lot of the media sources that you might see talking about gold and silver have significant vested interests at heart. Now, it'd be very easy for me to just sit here and tout the benefits of selling silver and say, you know, I will have had by the time this video goes live, another batch of huge amount of silver put up on my website that will go within minutes, it will. But I, I don't need to sit here and pump it. There are people out there who are willing to buy gold and silver and that market is still very buoyant. But it's important not to overcommit and not go too far into where you can't really afford to be. You just gotta ask yourself, what if things aren't gonna be as bad as everyone says? And those media outlets and those other channels that will fear monger, for want of a, a better phrase, um, they, you know, in my opinion, have agendas. It's it's all about clicks sometimes. But hey, you know, it is what it is. And I am the contrarian view somewhat to that. I know there are others out there that hold similar views to mine. And um, it's important not to 
um, forget that there is not there are other people, I should say, sorry, who are not just sitting there fear-mongering gold and silver, but talking about it in a rational, real-world way that does not mean that we cannot enjoy this. And, you know, for those that think that I'm just being hypocritical by sitting here with a big pile of gold and silver talking about the risks of owning gold and silver, and then, you know, just maybe have a good think about what those risks might be in relation to you. That's all I say. That's what I've been saying pretty much since I started making silver and gold related videos. I remember doing a video when there was like a pound an ounce movement in silver and I it was really early days and I got loads of you know messages through social media about this and I was like all right I guess I'll, I'll do a video on it and talking about it and it's the same video that people make every bloody time that there's a movement in precious metals. It's the same screenshot of the precious metal uh, green markers going it's all up it's all up uh, this is the start of the moonshot you know it's it's not it's not at all so Definitely remember to keep a level head is what I'm saying. Anyway, look, that's my perspective on the world of gold and silver. Be great to hear your own. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. And also let me know if you're in the super extra cool kids club. I am very, very happy to hear from all of you in that comment section. We'll see you on the next video. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more. <laughs>